Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inauguration ceremony of the 17th president of Presbyterian College, Dr. Claude C. Lilly. Honored guests, faculty, students, staff, alumni, and dear friends, welcome and thank you for being here. Praising God as blessings flow. As we come together to support and inaugurate our 17th president, let us acknowledge that leadership is hard to define. We are heirs to a tradition of academic excellence grounded in the Christian faith, structured by rigorous intellectual challenge, and enriched by an abiding curiosity for our changing world. The work of our organization has never been more critical as the historic landscape of higher education is shifting beneath our feet, presenting huge challenges and even greater opportunities. Part of the reformed tradition, we know that all truth is God's truth, and thus no truth is to be feared or suppressed. What must a successful leader do? Distinguish between right and wrong. Hold firm to those values upon which this college was founded and chartered. You always lend an ear to the voices of your alumni. To help us realize how competing priorities can develop into complementary pursuits. At this time, I'm honored to present Claude C. Lilly for inauguration as the 17th president of Presbyterian College. We need to focus on our roots. We need to focus on our roots as our founder did. We must turn our attention to the present and the future. The present is upon us. Rather than think of it as the now, I prefer to think of it as a bridge between the past and our future. But more importantly, it is gone in an instant. We know it well, we see its lines of demarcation, and then the lines fade. If we are to succeed as a college, we need to focus on the pre and preparation. In our world, we constantly hear comments that the only good education is one that will get you a job. We are bombarded by news articles saying that parents are focusing on their children being employed. And I can say as a parent, that's not a bad thing. We are blessed in South Carolina to have wonderful research institutions that serve a great purpose, but we are equally blessed perhaps more so, with outstanding liberal arts institutions that play a critical role. I, and I think you would agree that vocation is important. That is why we prepare young people to become lawyers, doctors, pharmacists, teachers, and ministers. And we encourage those who want to be engineers through our joint programs with schools like Clemson, Vanderbilt, Georgia Tech, and USC. We too want our students to be employed, but we know that our graduates in 2013, we'll have 11 jobs during their lifetime. And we prepare them not for the first or second or the third job, but perhaps for the 11th. Soren Kierkegaard said there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what is not true. The other is to refuse to believe what is. In essence, there is a chance that people can hold onto what Gordon Livingston has called an invincible ignorance. If we are to build on what William Plummer Jacobs started, we have to be vigilant not to subscribe to invincible ignorance, especially the invincible ignorance that change is always bad. We must help students grow. We must help them to embrace their willingness to think critically. And we must keep faith. 